I can't believe it's been, what, a couple, I guess it was a little bit over a week ago that I was filming the video, showing the back of the bed, talking about how we're gonna make the trip from Seattle to Los Angeles, and now here I am again, loading up the truck here in LA, and we're heading back to Seattle. So, uh, cutting the trip a little bit short, the weather's been kind of bad. Um, I will note that we had very little water liquid, leakage. Um, actually, I don't think there was any water leakage I noticed, and we've had pretty crazy rain here in LA. Um, it's been like uh, near record levels of rain. So it's been pouring quite a bit. The cover's holding up well. This video, I'm gonna talk about MPG a little bit, not as much as the first video, because I cover that much better. Um, this one's gonna be a lot less intense, but I'll, I'll give a little bit of an MPG update on the trip back. But this one's gonna be mostly kind of talking more about the weather, uh, how it handles in snow, and kind of just uh, inclement, uh, inclement, inclement, I don't know, um, poor weather situation. So uh, there, it looks like it's gonna be pretty bad. We're gonna go through I-5 all the way up uh, Siskiyou Pass, um, I've been looking at the weather all week and um, the road conditions, they're only letting people through with chains or uh, mud and snow tires with all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. So uh, that should be interesting. We're going to try to make it up to Mount Shasta tomorrow and then first thing in the morning go through Siskiyou Pass and that kind of southern Oregon because that's always the worst, um, the worst portion of our drive. And it looks like it's going to be snowing uh, according to the forecast and uh, last I checked the road conditions said the roads were covered with snow in the mountain passes, so it will be interesting. But at least I'll give you I'll give you an idea of how this handles in those type of conditions and how the stock tires are, and just how the trimmer in its pretty much stock form handles uh, that type of stuff. So I'll catch you again here tomorrow morning uh, when we get on the road, and hopefully we have a nice safe trip back. No matter how big the truck gets or how lightly we pack. Every time we head back, we somehow managed to fill it up almost to capacity. Almost done. Put more bar more bags and we'll be on the road. No, no. Come on. Let's go. Sit. On the road again. I uh, got a fresh trip started, so I can do the MPG on this uh, on this going home. I'm not gonna do it as in depth like I said last night, but I will have something. Um, we're stopping at Mount Shasta tonight, assuming the weather's good. It's really clear here in LA this morning. Uh, it's supposed to rain again, but at least we're getting like a nice smog-free uh, morning on the way out. So uh, we're gonna stop for some McDonald's, then. Uh, we're gonna head through the grapevine. Uh, when I see on the news this morning, it looks like it's okay. Last night it was kind of iffy. I think there was a lot of ice and some people getting stuck and things, but it looks good this morning. So we should have a clear day today without too many issues. Um, usually going outside of Reading, there's it gets kind of uh, it can be kind of iffy. So we'll see how that turns out tonight. But so far it looks like it's gonna be smooth today. Tomorrow's gonna be a little bit more of a interesting day in terms of weather. So we'll get something eating and get going. Yeah, it's still not bad, but it's super windy up here. Uh, we got through the pass already, we're on the downside, uh, going into like, uh, I always consider the central California, even though we're still in Southern California. But it's that long, flat drive of I-5 all the way to Sacramento and Redding and things like that. So it's raining right now, and it's 31, which is kind of horrible, because you're right around that barrier of freezing, so you end up with like ice sometimes, so. I'm gonna take it a little slower than normal. But it doesn't seem like anything's sticking. I think the ground temperature is higher than freezing, so there's no ice building up on the freeway. And they do the free, they do take like uh, pretty good care of this pass since it's like so much traffic on it. So should be fine. But look, you can't even see anymore. You can't even see the tunnel branch outside. Check out these gas prices. gonna hurt. Sylvie's driving, I can finally be a passenger for a bit. If you ever wondered what Central California looked like, this is pretty much it. It's about 
500 miles of just this. Look at Billy, she has a ton of room, but she still curls up in these little corners. There's a recall on the F-150 and mine truck was affected, so I forgot to check, but it has to do with insulation rubbing against the drive shaft. So let's, is this working still? Oh yeah, it is working. So I just want to quickly check this. We're in the Starbucks drive through getting coffee, so seemed like a good time. I don't think you can see very well down here. Let me try to fix this. All right, that's a bit better. So I think it has to do with that sound insulation, that foil. Uh, in some of the cars, it's kind of falling down and rubbing the drive shaft, which you see here. But I don't notice it loose anywhere. Uh, honestly, it looks good. And there's no, if you look at the drive shaft here, there's no scoring or rubbing or anything like that. Uh, I have to be careful, the muffler's right above me, I'm gonna get burned. So, let's get off and under here. Oh, look at Billy. So, yeah, looks like we're good. Uh, we should be fine to get home, at least until we get to the dealership back in Seattle for them to do the recall service. But I don't think the truck actually needs anything. So, anyways, let's grab the coffee and we'll get going. I'm a little bit confused about this recall, actually. So, I was looking under there. From the pictures I've seen, it seems like there's this, like, sound insulating foam that sits above the drive shaft in the other pictures. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if that's, like, a, maybe a high package or a lariat or something kind of package thing. Because I didn't notice things like thick sound insulation foam on the bottom of the truck. So... If anybody has uh, any kind of more information about that, that'd be nice. Let me know in the comments. Uh, either way, what I was concerned with is that foam, it comes loose on some trucks, and I've seen pictures of this. Uh, it'll kind of touch against the drive shaft, so when it's spinning, it creates hot spots. And over time, that can weaken the drive shaft and it can cause it to fail. And if it fails, obviously that's a bad thing because that can cause an accident and um, injuries and whatnot. But either way, the answered my question i want to know if anything was touching my drive shaft there's nothing um it looked like there was nothing even there that could do that as you've seen from the video so we should be safe to get home i'll get the recall taken care of when we get back there i right, got our starbucks as is tradition let's see well last uh this is the irish cream the holiday one so i figured it's the last time i'm gonna be able to get the holiday drinks uh, for this season so i'm back in the driver's seat I think we might try to go a little bit further than we originally plan planned, but we'll see. So. <laughs> Alright. So we made it to in and out. We're in Medford, Oregon. Uh, we're gonna stay in this around this area tonight. Uh, as you can see in the video, we had a lot of ice. Uh, it was around 30 degrees. It was raining, which is kind of like a bad combination. In general, when we've driven this for I think about eight years now, we drive it sometimes multiple times during the winter. And the times when we see the most accidents isn't when it's kind of snowing heavily. It's always been when it's around 30 and it's like slushy and icy and stuff like that. Just because. For whatever reason, people don't judge it correctly. And with uh, black ice, it kind of goes zero to 100. You either have pavement or ice and you have no traction. Unlike snow, where it's kind of a gradual loss and packed snow, you kind of know what you're getting. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we got tonight. Uh, thankfully, we didn't see any accidents or anything. We were okay, I didn't lose traction at all. Uh, I'm pretty happy with these tires. Um, <clears throat> these are like uh, general grabbers and um, that come standard on the trimmer. But, um, they held up better than, so my previous Ranger, my 2019 Ranger came with, um, it was Hancock's. I'll put all the details and tires and stuff in the description just because some people are interested in those type of things. But it was an FX4 package that came with Hancock's. Those were okay. Um, There's times where we're in conditions similar to this and they kind of get a little slippery. Um, before I sold the Ranger, I upgraded him to Falcon, I think it was Wild Peak. Like I said, I'll put that in the description as well with the exact ones. And those ones are much better. Those are much more similar to what we have on this. I'm pretty happy with these. I don't know if they're as good as the Falcon Wild Peak, but they're more in that ballpark compared to um, like the Hancock. So overall pretty good. We didn't lose traction. I did put it in the slippery mode. Um, I'm not sure how much that helped. I'm used to 
my previous cars were it was just either all-wheel drive or um, it didn't have all these fancy driving modes it was just four high like in the Ranger um, but I, mean, I can't complain we didn't lose traction or anything and I felt pretty confident and firm on the ground so we're gonna get uh, done here eating it out it's the last time we're having it out for a while before we go back to California so you're gonna enjoy this and then head out again in the morning I think it's gonna be nicer tomorrow but we'll see last day of the trip we're here we're eating our world-class Colonel breakfast and uh, we're gonna hit the road last night I realized that we were down the street from the world's best cheese so in 2019 Rogue Creamery let's see if I can get this to focus here Rogue Creamery uh, based here in Oregon Washington uh, won the award for the world's best cheese so their blue cheese beat out about 4,000 other cheeses from around the world and it won this competition so we want to pick some up we're gonna try to pick up about as small as a quantity as we can pick up because it's pretty expensive um, just enough so we can try it so we'll pick that up head home hopefully we get to try that tonight uh, it is a blue cheese I'm not a big blue cheese fan but when you're near the world's best cheese you just gotta stop and get some so we're gonna do that hit the road the road conditions seem okay it's pretty slushy but nothing crazy nothing we can't handle So we got the cheese, world famous. We'll try it tonight, hopefully, or maybe tomorrow. But it should be nice and cooled out in the back of the truck. Now we're ready to head home. It's getting dark, uh, you might not even be able to see me at this point, but I want to wrap this video up. We're about 80 miles out of Seattle. Uh, right now our total trip is, let me check here. So our trip from Los Angeles to Seattle, we're at about 1,050 miles. Uh, our MPG was 19.3. Um, kind of based on previous calculations I did. If you're interested in more kind of in-depth uh, MPG stuff, uh, check out my previous video, I'll put that link in the description. But, so yeah, so 19.3 on the trip computer, uh, based on the previous experience I have, that runs about 0.7 mpg higher than reality. So that's probably like uh, 18 and a half mpg um, on this trip up here to Seattle. So that is driving kind of uh, quicker, so about 75 to 80 for most of the trip. Um, there are some portions where we drove a little slower, but overall it's higher than 70. Uh, like in the previous video, I kind of demonstrated it drops off pretty uh, severely after you go over 70 miles per hour so once you go above 70 miles per hour your MPG kind of takes a nose dive so this is not this is kind of expected if you're interested in the total trip so our trip from uh, Seattle to LA all our kind of city driving around LA and then back to Seattle uh, that's 2,500 miles and we're about 19.1 uh, combined so that's the city driving to LA the highway driving to and from uh, so that's like 18.3 I guess uh, MPG uh, Overall, the driving, once we got back into Washington, as you know, um, Washington's been having some snowstorms over the last, I guess, a uh, couple of days, maybe about the last week-ish, half a week. Um, there is another uh, storm coming in tonight, so we're trying to get home before that. We did see a handful of big rigs and uh, trailers uh, that kind of ran off the road. It looks like it was from a couple of days ago. But either way, the conditions here in Washington aren't great on the highway, but we haven't had any issues, and it's been relatively dry today. So we're gonna wrap up this video and uh, hopefully get home safely, maybe grab a coffee before we get home. But that was pretty much the whole trip. The truck handled well. Uh, there was nothing really crazy that uh, most kind of all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicles could handle. So it handled well. It handled as well or better than my previous Ranger uh, XLT. I think I had the, um, what package did it have? I forgot the name of the package, but my, Ranger had a uh, FX4, sorry, FX4 package. 
So the handle uh, as well are better than that. Um, I know it's a little bit less slipping. I think these grabber, um, general grabbers work better than the tires I had on that truck. At least the stock tires uh, that, I, that came with the FX4. So we're gonna go home, hopefully try that cheese, and then we'll get this whole video wrapped up. Final update before we get to the cheese. So got home a couple hours ago. It's been snowing. I live on a pretty steep hill and people have been slipping going up and down this hill all afternoon. My neighbor here in the uh, Forerunner actually um, helped our roommate get up the hill uh, while we were gone. So that was nice of them because our roommate drives a, uh, what is it? It's a Honda Accord, but it's only two wheel drive and he just moved up here and he doesn't have, uh, I would say proper tires. So I've been watching people slip up here all week or all night. And I actually uh, got my toe straps out and helped um, somebody with a two-wheel drive Tacoma get up the hill. So I, I towed them up the hill. So that's not something I would have felt confident doing in my, what was it, my Ranger before. My truck hasn't slipped at all. So I just want to give this little tidbit. It's kind of anecdotal experience. Uh, there's a lot of people having trouble today, but I'm not having trouble with the trimmer. So who's that? Oh, uh, should we just show this piece to start just without? Yeah, oh, I found the thing first. Huh? Yeah. Do you want a spoon? Oh, it feels creamy. Right? Oh, very pungent. This is blue cheese? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It does taste like the world's best. Wow. You want a cracker, too? You have to. Can I do it? It's the world's best. Shut up. What yeah. are you saying that? Hillary's the world's best. Is this the one you're talking about before yeah. you left? Oh. Like, I didn't make it up. <laughs> you're literally eating the world's best cheese. Like, it doesn't get better than this. I'm sorry if the rest of your life is going to be. Your cheese life is going to be downhill from here. It's super creamy. It is really creamy. Wow, it's actually really good. Well, I would hope. It's the world's best. All right, that was a good way to end the trip.